Hello! In this video, we'll start learning Octave as a way to perform computer calculations in engineering. Most of what we'll see here applies directly to MATLAB, as Octave and MATLAB are very closely related. Nowadays, Octave comes with this very nice graphical interface, which is what we are looking at here. And this has several areas, such as the command window, the file browser, the workspace, the command history, and the editor, which we'll have a look in a moment. The command window is the probably the first way you're going to interact with Octave, where you can give direct input and perform simple calculations and do some testing as well. But the most recommended way of working with uh, Octave is through the editor, where you can create, open, save files, run the, all the commands that you need to perform some calculation, and most importantly you can save this for using it later and to show it to other people. But in this first uh, examples we are going to use, let's use the command window. So in Octave we need variables to hold the values to perform the calculations that we want. And as in most script languages, in Octave we don't need to declare variables, we just need to define them. So for example, if I want to hold the value 2 in a variable called x, I simply write it like this. So this is the name of the variable, uh, the equal sign or the assignment sign, and the semicolon to finish uh, the assignment. So if we do that and press enter, we'll see that in our workspace now there is a variable called x and it holds the value 2 as we want it. And now we can start performing calculations with that with the, say the base the basic uh, mathematical operations such as these ones, so subtraction and multiplication and division like that. And always ends our uh, assignment with semicolons. So we see now the there's a new variable y with which holds a new value which is the result of all these calculations here. One of the nicest things of using these uh, programming packages such as Octave is that it comes loaded with many built-in functions so we can use all sorts of trigonometric functions for example like this and uh, there are many other uh, useful mathematical uh, functions as well that we can use straight away without having to um, develop them or load packages or anything. Uh, we can use um, uh, exponentials as well and there are many other functions that we can use such as square root and there are many uh, constants that they are already uh, preloaded as well, such as pi, so we can, for example, round the value of pi like this. So there are many, many uh, ready things that um, we can start using straight away in Octave. Um, another thing is that we have the imaginary variables as well, so i stands for the imaginary or the square root of minus one, and if for for some reason you learned it as the variable j, we have that in Octave as well. Now in most engineering uh, calculations we will be interested in using arrays or a sequence of numbers. And to use a sequence of numbers or arrays in Octave is really simple. We can create them in two main ways. Uh, first we can create them element by element, so for example if I have an array with these um, elements here uh, I will write them inside square brackets and I'll put a space between each element of this array. So like this I will have one, two, three, four elements in this array and I'll put spaces between them to indicate where one begins and the other ends. Uh, if we type it like this, we'll see that now we have a variable called a, which holds all these four values that we typed in here. So we'll see, we'll say that this array has dimension one by four or size one by four, which means that it has one row and four columns. So this is the first, second, 
third and fourth columns. So this is nice, but uh, it's very common for us to use a sequence uh, of equally spaced numbers in our calculations. And we can do that in Octave using the column operator. So to start uh, showing the column operator, let's show a basic example. Uh, let's create a sequence going from 1 to 10 like this. So if we cr uh, type this command like this, this tells Octave to create a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10 going uh, with a space of 1 between them. So we just create a sequence like this. We can maybe start at a different number and we can go to a different number like this. Uh, there's a variation of this command where we indicate the space between the elements that we have in the sequence. So for uh, in here for example we can go from 4 to 16, so these are the extremities of our sequence, and a space of 2 between each element. So it will create something like this. So 4 to 6 to 8 all the way to 16. So again we can have different uh, ranges for this, different start and end values and different values for the uh, distance between the elements as well. So you see now from half to half we have a very long array like this. So we can use this idea of uh, sequences in MATLAB to create arrays as well. So let's say I want to create an array which goes from 2 to 6 in a space of 0.5 between them. Now we have an array B or variable B which holds this sequence of numbers so we can see here that it has 9 values going from 2 to 6 with a space of a half between them. So again we say that it is an array of size 1 by 9 or 1 row by 9 columns and we can see this array here. Now we need to have a way of reaching the elements of an array so we can perform calculations on them. And So for example if I want to use this element here, the second element of B, I can use the index operator with the parentheses, something like this. So this says that I'm going to the array B and I'm going to get the second element of it, which is this number here, this value here. And that's what I get from it. So for example, I want to create another variable which gets the second element on B and multiplies it by 2. That will get something like this. All right? So I can use pretty much any uh, element on my array B. So the first element is this value here. I can get, say, the seventh element, which is this guy here. And I can have the last element, which is this value here. Uh, there's a shortcut for using the last element, which is the keyword AND. So if you don't know how many elements you have in an array, but you're sure you want to use the last one, you can use the AND keyword like this. And we can use that idea of ranges to get values from an array as well. So for example, if I want these three first values of the array B, I can use the column operator like this. So this will get me the f element from 1 to 3, so it is these three values that we get here. So I could use the... Uh, I maybe want to use the third to the last value, something like this. So I'll get the number 3, 3.5, three all the way to the number 6 in this array here. Now it's also very common for us to use matrices in our computations, or strictly speaking multidimensional arrays. So for us to create a matrix, uh, we use a similar uh, notation for creating arrays. 
So for example, we can use the square brackets to input uh, element by element. So let's say we want a 3x3 three three matrix. Uh, we start putting the elements of um, the first row. And when we're finished with the first row, we use the semicolon to go to the next row. And again, we can start inputting the elements of the second row. And another semicolon we'll go to the third row and we start inputting all the elements that we might need and if we have a look on how this matrix looks so this is the, our first row up to the first semicolon then our second row up to the second semicolon and then our last row something like this and we'll see here in the workspace that now we have a variable d which has a size 3 by 3 so we have three rows and three columns. If we want to use the elements of a matrix, now we need two indexes for that. Uh, index for, uh, the index for the row and the index for the column. So let's say we want to access this element here. We'll need to go to the second row and to the third column, like this. So that's how we get to access this element. If we wanted to access this element, for example, we would need to go to the third row and the first column, like this. Okay, So that's how we use indices to access elements on a multidimensional array, or in this case, simply a matrix. And if we start having many other matrices uh, as well, we can s perform operations in this uh, matrix. For, for example, I can multiply the array E by the matrix D, like so. But if we recall from algebra, I cannot uh, perform this multiplication here. We'll get an error here, because the dimensions or the size of these matrices don't allow this operation. We have a 3x3 three three matrix trying to multiply a 1x3 array, so the inner dimensions here are not um, do not allow this multiplication. But uh, we can perform uh, operations such as the transpose, so if we have the vector or the array E, we can transpose it like this using the single code um, character, so whatever was a row becomes a column. We can perform this on matrices as well. So we have the matrix D, and this is the matrix D transpose. So whatever was a row now becomes a column. Second row becomes the second column. So we can use that to perform the operation then D times E transpose, because now we will have a 3x3 three three matrix multiplying a 3x1 array, and that will be allowed. We can also invert matrices as long as the, mat uh, the indexes or the size allow it, like so. And we can perform uh, operations on matrices or arrays as well. So for example, if I have the array E, and I want to calculate the sign of each element of E, I can just use the same function that we used before, the trigonometric function, and it will understand that I want to calculate the sign of each element of this array. So let's start using what we've seen so far to create our first file here in the editor. When you open the editor, there's usually an empty file already here, but you can open or create new ones by clicking here, like so. Let's say we want to use this file to create a variable, uh, an array x, which goes from 0 to, say, 4 pi, and intervals of a small number, say, pi over 10. Uh, now we need to run this file so we can uh, have this uh, array created. So there's this button here, the save and run, uh, like a little play button which you can use for running so, uh, our files. When we click that for the first time, it will say we haven't saved our file yet, or we haven't given a name for it yet. So we can do that and save and run. 
So you see that now we have created an array or a variable named x, which is an array with 41 elements, with the values that we've chosen here. Now let's say we want to calculate the cosine of each of the elements of this array x and put that in a new array called y. So for that we could think of creating a for loop with a counter variable that goes from 1 to whatever is the number of elements in x. And inside this for loop we will uh, calculate each value of this new array y as being the cosine of the respective element in the array x, like this. And so this is the this is how a basic for loop looks in uh, Octave. Now we can run this and we'll see that we will create an array y with the same number of elements as x and each element in y is the cosine of the respective element in x. However, there's a simpler way of doing this in LaTeX, which is by simply using the function cosine in x. Octave will understand that x is an array and it will perform the cosine operation in each element of x and will save all these values in this array z. So if we play this file now, or run it, we will see that there is a new array called z with the dimension as same as y and x and the values are exactly the same as y. So this operation here is equivalent of this operation here. And we could go on the command window and type uh, z to look in uh, all the elements of it, but it will be much more interesting to see these results graphically. And the basic command to generate figures in uh, Octave is the plot command. And the plot command you use with mainly two uh, arguments. First, the values you want in the horizontal uh, uh, direction. So in this case is our x array. And the values that you want in the uh, vertical uh, direction. So in this case, the variable y. So if we run this, we'll see that there will be a figure uh, which will show this um, cosine of the function or the function cosine over the interval from 0 to 4 pi. But it doesn't show here to us what it means, so it's interesting for us to always use the x label and y label to tell whatever is looking uh, or whoever is looking at our figures what is in there. So we can say that here is for example x and here is the cosine of x like this. And now when we generate our figure we have here what these uh, axes mean. So here we have the cosine function of uh, or in the range from 0 to 4 pi. If you look that the uh, curve is a um, bit um, not looking very rounded is because we don't have many points. We can come back here and change uh, the interval that we have and run it again and we'll see now that it's a very rounded curve and it looks much nicer now. You can do a bit more uh, fiddling with the plot command. You can change, for example, colors. You can use uh, letter K for black, and now we have our curve in black. You can use the letter R for red, or G for green, and Y for yellow. But be careful with these colors, because some of them don't look very nice, or they don't show up at all. Uh, so stick to very basic colors like black and red. And you can change the line type as well. So the this uh, command here stands for a uh, dashed line, like so. Uh, this will stand for a dash dot line. And a uh, column will stand for a simply dotted line, like so. So there you have very basic ways of uh, 
creating uh, arrays and plotting results in Octave.